this time so I'd like to... it is 6.02 p.m. Um, the clock does need to be updated in the room, but we will go with the correct time of 6.02 p.m. Um, I'll call the meeting to order and we'll start with a roll call of all members. Mrs. Fraser? Here. Mr. Markovitz? Here. Mr. Midlick? Here. Mr. Sharma? Here. Okay. So the first order of business is the minutes from the March 3rd meeting. Um, it was noted on those minutes that we, we, we would be amending the minutes from the meeting before, and I have not received a re revised copy of those minutes. So I'd like it to be noted that those minutes are still outstanding um, and should be recognized at the next meeting. So we would need a copy of the revised minutes. Okay. Um, as far, so that was the minutes from February 17th that need to be um, approved still. Right. So for the meeting minutes from our meeting on, um, March no 3rd. wait, yes, yes, the March 3rd minutes, we were sent those, and does anyone have comments they'd like to make about those? On the minutes? It's yeah. not comments, it's corrections. In the way that you would do that is you make a motion to accept the minutes as submitted and then call for discussion. Actually, according to Robert's Rules of Order, the chair is not allowed to make any motions. Actually, we're asking you to make the motions. So. But according to Robert's Rules of Order, which this board is obligated to go by the... That you figured out now after 10 years. No, we have never made motions. The chair, in the past, it is the very rare for a chair to do it. The way the city is doing minutes is... You make a motion to accept the minutes as submitted. If there is a correction, you make the correction, and then you move on. It's not at bait at this point. If you don't want to make a motion. It is not appropriate for me to make the motion according to Robert's Rules of Order. According to Robert's Rules of Order, the chair shall not make a motion. It is to come from a member of the board. A second member of the board is to second it. The chair is allowed to request a motion be made if it makes proceedings move more expeditiously. If it's okay, I'll make the motion today and uh, we can discuss this after the meeting and then we can hash out any issues, if that's okay with everybody. I know you liked the way that that other board was run, but I do see inconsistencies and I don't think that we, and it, I mean, I can read right from Robert's Rules of Order that a we, chairman we, shall we, do well to remember again, that parliamentary we're, we're law was made for this. deliberative assemblies. Yeah, you are talking this. over the chair. And absolutely, I mean, do we really the want chair's to? chair's not running the meeting in the manner which I expect it to be run. You've got a motion on the table. Is there a second? I'll second. We'll call for a vote. Did you call for discussion first? I did earlier and you said I couldn't. You didn't have a motion seconded at the time. Okay, we have two motions to accept them as they are. Does anyone have anything like to say about as they are or as they should be? Is there anything you would like corrected or that you see is missing from the minutes? I'm good as they are. I'm here. I'm okay with it. Is that a motion? Motion's already um, the motion is up, but we have not called for a vote yet. So we have everyone says that they are accepting of it. So now I will call for a vote. Mrs. Fraser? Yes. And Mr. actually, Mayor. I vote last according to Robert's Rules of Order. You call the first person who made the motion, followed by the person who seconded it, then other members in alphabetical order, and then the chairman last. I mean, if we really want to be sticklers on this, and actually when someone speaks, they're supposed to stand, and the chair shall not speak in first person. I mean, if you really want to get into it. So I'll call for a vote. Mr. Midley. Actually, you would call the person who um, made the motion first. I did not hear that person then. Okay. Mr. Sharma. Yes. John, John seconded. No, uh, I second. Oh, sorry. David. Dave seconded. Dave did, yes. Mr. Markovitz? Yes. Mr. Midlick? Yes. Mrs. Fraser? 
Yes. Okay, public participation. Is there anyone here tonight that does not have a case on the agenda who would like to speak? Okay, then we will be taking the first case. That is case 220311. It's um, at 2700 Aurora Road. Hello, my name is Sam Kostuk. I'm with Signorama. We're the signage contractor on this project. So we see you have a new sign going in where it used to be Stars Ballroom. Yes. The new sign is Electronic <clears throat> Flip. Yes. And it's internally illuminated? Yes, internally illuminated face lit channel letters, similar as the previous sign. Okay. Um, will it be on the same track? Uh, not on the same exact track, but a similar track system, yeah. Okay. And then we have um, a second sign or two signs that are identical? Uh, the, the, those are just inserts for the existing monument sign. The electronics flip, the self-defense sign also? I think that was withdrawn. Withdrawn? Okay. Uh, it, right now we're here to only seek permits for the electronic flip. Just the one that goes on the building? Yes. Okay. The, well, if you're speaking about this, these are inserts for the existing monument sign. Yes. Yeah, we also received just, yeah. this electronics flip sign. That is one of the inserts. It's just That's showing you inserts. a close-up of the insert. Okay, and then the self-defense is That is withdrawn. one of the inserts as well. Oh, this is going to go in? The yes. self-defense one? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on with the building sign for them, but those two are being asked to be approved for the monument sign. Okay. Um, is the monument sign internally illuminated also? I believe it is, yes. Okay. So the white background will light up, but the black letters on those will not? Yes. Okay. I think we Any have comments? a pecking order. Which way you want to start? I'm okay without a particular pecking order, but do you have anything? I have no comments. Looks pretty straightforward, so I'm okay to move it. Okay. You're making a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion. Everything. Mm -hmm. okay, I'll make see. a motion to approve as is, as submitted. I'll do a second. And that is for all three signs? Yes. <clears throat> you make the motion with the case number? Sure. There it goes. I'll make a motion to approve case number 22-03-11. May I have a second? I second it. Is there any discussion? No. We'll call for a vote. Mr. Passers, please call the roll. Mr. Sharma? Yes. Mr. Midley? Yes. Mr. Markovitz? Yes. Mrs. Fraser? Yes. Okay, so you're thank approved you. Um, you. by the ARB. The building department will be contacting you. Okay, thank you. The next case is 220312. It's at 8027B Daryl Road. Hi, I'm Evan Hi. with CPK. Um, we are the design builder for Summit Sound and Audio, and we are looking at uh, an addition to the rear of the property. Um, very similar to one that was actually designed, I think, 10 years ago or so. Um, but it's pretty much extending the, the building and is now out further, uh, 2,000 square feet. Okay. And I do have samples that were requested for the exterior, which, is, which were not submitted yet.
Will you be continuing the existing siding onto the new? Yes, the, uh, uh, not on the new building. Uh, on the new building, I'll have it, but the old won't be replaced. It's a uh, vertical blind fastened metal siding. Um, the only difference is there's a really light texture to the existing siding. It was like a very light rib that they no longer make. So they've done repairs in the past few years and they've used a smooth siding to get as close as possible. The thickness and profile is the same, but the texture is slightly different. We can still get the same color. Same color, same profile. Same like we've width. lost the texture. Correct. Correct. Same roof. Same roof. The roof is a, it's a 16 inch um, panel roof. It's inch and three quarter rib and we can get that exact roof and that's just white. So we'll be matching the existing. Right. So you see you have some fenestration. That's good to see. Yeah, it's a pretty plain building to start with. So. Right. We have exit door, overhead doors. Yes, there are. It is. Uh, they're working on vehicles in there, so there are. Will there be security lights? Security. Uh, there will be lights at the doors, the doors, as required by code. Yes. Okay. And will there be any? No signage included with this. Package. No, it's already a monument side on the front, so we will not be changing any signage. Okay. I think it looks good. I have no further comments. Do you have any comments? No comments. I move to. Uh, well, I have. You have one. Yeah. On the, I just on the center picture, first page. This page. Is that was there a repair done there and sort of in the upper left? Oh, on the photo? One second. Get there. That's why I was wondering if that was the difference between the siding because there's there where it's flatter. It most likely is. And I'm trying to find the photo. Here it is. You're saying the top row center photo? Yeah. On the upper left corner, right? You can yeah, see so that. that is a that is a repair they did, but the color is not ideal with what they used. So I matched up. What you have is a different color then from that. Uh, yes, I do, and I have samples of that as well. It's a uh, it's a DMI color and it's a metallic silver, and I went out there and made sure. I mean, it matches well to what's there now as far yeah. as the color. Okay. That was it. Uh, yeah, I'll move uh, on case number 220312 be approved as submitted. I'll second. Uh, is there any further discussion? No. We'll call. Call for a vote. Mr. Markovitz? Yes. Mr. Sharma? Yes. Mr. Midlick? Yes. Mrs. Fraser? Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Last case for the evening is case 220313. It's at 8981 Depot Street. I'm Ryan Ropel. Um, I'm the homeowner looking to build. I did. Looking to build a single family dwelling on 8981 Depot Street. Are you doing a two-car attached garage or a three-car? Three-car attached garage. Okay. We have three-car on the plan and on the front elevation, but the rear elevation is missing the garage. It only shows a two-car. So I wanted it to be noted. The rear elevation is the center drawing I on the it. bottom. Do you see what I mean? Yep. We're missing the, the third-car garage on that one. 
Okay, so um, it should be noted that the that drawing should be corrected to reflect the third car. Um, maybe if red pens out. Do you have red? Let's we'll see if I've got I've got red. Yeah, I've got it. So in this case, we'll see um, the roof extending out horizontally with the gable. And then from the plan and from the elevations that we have, we don't have a man door off of the garage. Um, typically a three foot door off the garage, no man door. So um, I would recommend that we would be adding one preferably to the left elevation near the front. Um, if the, are you the homeowner? Yes. Okay, so if the homeowner prefers, um, we could put a window on that side and you could do the man door out the rear if that's more um, functional for you. Um, I think that that's an appropriate option to add. And then the right elevation is lacking on windows or detail fenestration some um, we do have the two on the right elevation I looked at possibly adding one toward the front but you'd end up with it in at the top of the stairs and you have one facing forward so I would either make it an option personally this is my thoughts we can talk about it usually we kind of jump in on each other but um, to either add one on the right elevation what would be at the top of the steps toward the front on the second story or to add one in the garage that's facing the right elevation um, in that open space between the porch and the front face of the garage you know what I'm saying there right and uh, you said between the porch and the front of the garage right yeah so centered on that area I would probably either add one there or put one up on the top near the stairs that way we have a little bit more um, glazing on the right side. Okay. So I don't want to dictate exact, I, I know what, sorry. <laughs> right, but where your stairs are, that window, would add, if it was there, it'd have to be moved even more forward, I believe. Let me look at the plan. You would want it at the landing, I think. Would I, yeah. So either, I don't know if this is better or not, but it would either be right here at the top of the landing, which would give you something on that face. You have windows downstairs down here. It doesn't do us much good to put a window in your closet, which would be centered. This bedroom, I mean, we could probably possibly put one there, but so I'd either do one there or on the first floor. A window about here just so you've got something facing that side of the street so when you come down the street at that angle you're gonna see some glazing facing that way too so and to me it to, we'll let other board members speak here but to me it's kind of an either-or I don't think you need them both but I would do one and then either a door or a window um, sorry um, the garage facing this way, either that's the man door or it's a window. Okay. And then alternate, or additionally, you can put another man door in the back. So door in the back and a window or just the door? One man, one man door. One man door. Either on the back or on the side. Okay. And if you don't do the side one, then there should be a window. Okay. That way we have something on that face. Okay. And that's standard for you know, any of the new houses that are coming and we're putting a man door on all the garages okay. and we are trying to avoid all blank faces, um, having something, and it doesn't always have to be a window. Sometimes it's a bump in and out and a little roof. Sometimes it's a chimney. It doesn't have to necessarily be a window, but it gives um, character to the sides so that they're not blank walls. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's my reasoning. Okay, anyone else? Garage 
Do you um, have anything? I'm, I'm okay with as is, uh, with the windows addition and a man door. I'm okay with that. I don't have any more comments. David? Yeah. No, I'm good with what you got. Yeah, you covered it good. And did we have steps to grade? Yeah, we do. Okay. Okay, so does somebody want to make the motion? Do you understand what the the either ors on the windows? Yeah. Yeah, I'll make a motion uh, on case 220313 uh, that we approve as noted or commented or discussed, whichever one's the right one, um, that uh, the window uh, be on the, put on the right side of the, on the right elevation e in either location, one centered on the face of the garage on the right elevation or above the top of the stair landing or at the top of the stair landing mm -hmm. on the right side. And that the, uh, what is it, the rear elevation needs to be corrected to show the extension for the third garage that it, it picked up on that. And with the addition of a man door to the garage, the man door can either be on the left elevation front portion of the garage or to the front of the house or on the back of the garage. And if the option is to go with the man door on the back of the garage, then a window is needed in the garage on the left elevation. That's good. I think they got all of it. Right? That sounds good. Would someone like to second it? Are you able to get that with the conditions? Correct. How many conditions do you have? Four? I have a total of, put on the last left elevation, there's the add a man door and a window. If the man door is on the back of the side, and then if it's on the back, you need a window edit. Was there a second? I'll there second. has not been yet. Um, any more discussion? I'm good on the motion. I'll call for a vote. Mr. Markovitz? Yes. Mr. Midlick? Yes. Mr. Sharma? Yes. Mrs. Fraser? Yes. Okay, you've been approved. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Enjoy the house. <laughs> if you need a good roofer, let me know. <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody? He did the roof on my. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. The company JBL. Yes, but in the okay. session we can yeah, discuss. Should, uh... Okay. All right, so we have miscellaneous on here. Does anyone have anything they'd like to discuss? So are you telling me that you're not willing to follow this guideline that was supplied to you? Yes or no? Just a yes or no. I, I, don't I... Know, I just a yes or no. I want I want you on the record telling me whether you're going to follow the guidelines that we're giving you. Speaking verbatim from the script, including grammatical errors, bothers me. Actually, I think we collected the grammatical errors that you were so kind of to point out to us. Are you willing to use this in future? Yes or no? If I am informed by the law director that it is required so of you me. I don't think the council person that oversees your committee is able to advise you on how to run a meeting. Is that what you're telling me? Is able to or is forcing upon me? I'm trying to get your in line with the other committees. In line with the other committees in a way that goes against what is in our ordinance, saying that if we are supposed to follow Robert's Rules of Order, I mean, I can read you, I've got it right here, highlighted from Robert's I, Rules I, I of Order. No, you don't want to hear me speak, but I you would like to I speak to me. I've spent an hour and a half so far this year having you give me your opinions, and I haven't seen a lot of we're going to do it your way. I've well. spent time listening to your phone call and your other co correspondence and watching the videos that you've emailed me 
and I have spent time researching Robert's Rules of Order in order to run this board in a professional way that is appropriate for the in size. In your opinion, not in the city's opinion, because I'm the city here. I am also part of the city here. Actually, who, so who do you work for? Do I have a badge with the city's ID on it? I don't know. Did you put an ID on it or a, a number on it? I don't believe there are numbers on it. You got a badge. We are in the ordinance. We 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 um, are in the codified ordinance as being a required board for the city, a required operation. No, you're, you're, we are you're appointed you're in members. The charter, you're we, in the charter. Yes. As a, as a as a committee, everything else is ordinance driven and can be changed. Yes. Council hires you and pays you, so you you are a committee of council. And council sets the rules to which you work by. So I don't understand why there's so much pushback because to try to do things differently. It's becoming a hostile work environment with the way that it is being approached. I, I agree. I think you're extremely hostile. Absolutely. And I can't imagine why you would think we would reappoint you to this board or I, I just, I, that just, if this board continues in this way, I will not be seeking reappointment. I have given 11 years to this board, and, and, and I have and, acted and, professionally and, and, have been and logically. For this board for a long period of time, that the, the, the past law director and the building department, they've sent me the minutes of those meetings that were held in November and Jan July of last year. November and July, okay. I'll send it to you. I have them. And I'm just saying, I don't want to come here and fight with you every time, but we're giving you direction to do things differently, and you're telling me that you're unwilling to do that or you're going to do it your own way. I just want to make sure we got that clear. I feel like that's this pushback because I express concerns with the changes that have, were being made. I, I, don't, I didn't hear you embrace any of them yet, so. I haven't seen them acknowledged even in the minutes yet, that they were even voiced. Minutes are a reflection of the vote. The record is the tape. The tape is the record. Well, then they are in the tape. They are. And the minutes do not count, apparently. They are just a reflection of a vote, and it's just what's in the tape that counts, correct? Yep. That's the way it works. Then why do we even vote on the minutes? Why don't we just vote that the tape well, be saved? Well, for instance, if I wanted to vote on the minutes, or if I wanted to make a correction, it's just to make corrections on something that is incorrect in the minutes. It's not to add to them or, or elongate them. For instance, I could, have, I could have asked you to make a motion to correct the spelling of my name in the minutes a month ago. Didn't care. It doesn't matter. Right. So, okay. so when you're trying to add to them or re, or, or restate what's already in the video, it doesn't make any sense. The only thing that you're doing during the minutes is to look for things that are incorrect and correct them. Period. All it says is who talked, and that's where we're going. Can I offer a suggestion? Mm -hmm. Maybe like uh, having a law director or building director have a meeting with all of us so we can sit together for maybe not when we have a meeting, maybe for like half hour, an hour, we can all sit together. We can express our concerns directly. And, you know, we can listen from the straight from a horse's mouth, I guess, per se. Would that be helpful? I don't know. It didn't seem to work the last couple times it was done. When has the law director sat with us? I, I, you have not had meetings with Dave Maestros in the last two years? Well, you said it hasn't seemed to work the last couple of times, and so I'm That's wondering I'm, when you're I'm, speaking about. I'm talking about when, you, when they've had, had meetings with you to talk about how to do things differently. They haven't had meetings with us. I, I, I've been led to believe differently, and that's... No, and time. that was what we were talked about. Are you able to schedule something? That, are you able to facilitate? Thank you. If, if you don't mind. Not a problem. Thank you. If it helps us... I mean, you know, we can talk straight to the people instead of, you know, running around and mm -hmm. if it helps. I mean, if board is okay with it, obviously. And my understanding, I guess, is where Robert Rules of Order is not really to be followed strictly. It's, it's the option we're going with, I guess, based off of what council has come up with. So what we were this, right, this is similar to what we, 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 we were saying. It's not hard line. Right. What we were saying was minute people talking over each other in the meeting, not, not necessarily defining who was saying what, and not making correct motions. So they asked us to correct that. Okay. So we 
probably do need to be a little more careful if we're having side conversations because I think that those That's can. Why we split you up. I'm still talking. You're interrupting. <laughs> this is like this is the talking over thing. Um, when somebody starts talking over another person, I, it's probably very hard for the recorded minutes. Or if we're having side conversations, uh, which we do occasionally because we're looking through drawings and we're interpreting things. So we just have to be careful if we're having side conversations to not do them in front of the mic if we're looking for clarification in a drawing. Yeah, I think these conversations are important too sometimes to get somebody to agree with each other the way we see it. Sometimes or sometimes I don't understand it and you do. I can talk to you real quick on the side. But yeah, we can mic back. If you push the button in the middle and the light goes off, your mic is off. Okay. Yeah, but I think those conversations have always been important for us. It helps. Need some dialogue back and forth a little bit. I don't we think could, we do it that much anyway. So I'm just saying, uh, there's so many times I need to ask Dave. We something. can push a button next time if we need to talk. We can push a button. It's easy. Yeah, I have no problem with that, but I, I can't say banning side conversations. Right, especially if it's needed for understanding the drawings. Yeah, right. And sometimes we have to point at things. This is a visual field. Yeah, and this is simple, but there's sometimes. Some of the prints are very detailed. I mean, even today, I held up my drawing. He marked up his, approached me, showed me what he thought, where he thought I was describing. Because, I mean, in words, yes, we should be able to describe it all, but it's more efficient sometimes to point, and we have to just make sure we vocalize what we have. But I don't drawn. think we rarely talked over each other. Very rarely. Yeah, that's it's like. And never to be rude. Usually, it's just if somebody got excited about an idea and they. Yeah. Right. Right. So there's got to be some leeway both ways. Yeah. I think I think a meeting would be fine and to see, you know, it can't be just so strict. I mean, you have to have some, some room, to, some elbow room. Right. It does say here, um, a chairman will do well to remember that parliamentary law was made for deliberative assemblies and not the assemblies for parliamentary law. This is well expressed by a distinguished English writer on parliamentary law, thus, the great purpose of all rules and forms is to subserve the will of the assembly rather than to restrain it, to facilitate and not to obstruct the expression of their deliberative sense. So that's Robert's Rules of Order saying yeah. you need to follow these you know, well enough in order to run things, but not to let the rules get in the way of yeah. making sense. Yeah. And they also talk in other sections of this um, we don't even necessarily have to. What are you referring to? I don't even know what you're talking. What, what you? Where did you get that? Because Robert Rule's books are probably 150 of them on Amazon, and they all have some different interpretations. Slight like their interpretations. Okay. So we're basically just asking you how to run a discussion and mm -hmm. get proper motions and get them through without a lot of crosstalk in the meetings. Okay. And we will work on that. We will try and make it a little more clear. Um, I do like bringing up one case at a time and working all the way through it. The meeting that you sent me, they had each case come up and then they talked through each case and then they went back and brought each case back up sure. to comment and vote. And I think the way that ours works, because we do have large drawing sets, I would like to stick with just one case at a time coming through. Um, I think that's more appropriate for this board to see one whole case, vote the them end. all the way through, and then move to the next. I misinterpreted what I was telling you on that meeting. It was not that we were going to put a work session like the Planning Commission does and then come back and do the votes, or that's the way the Board of Zoning Appeals are. It was simply to talk about how the discussion of a motion was run and how motions are made and how the chairman proposes the board. It okay. was not about having a work session so maybe you, you interpreted that different than I meant it. Mm -hmm. I was simply talking about Mark Cohen. You, you didn't hear a lot of crosstalk in the meeting. He's in control. He goes person to person to person. They state their case. He makes a clear motion with the, with the he proper. Does. He does. He's awesome. So, and, I uh, feel with the board members that we have here, um, I think that everyone on here would be capable of doing a lot of these duties. Um, and I'm comfortable with anyone asking questions. I don't want anyone to talk over. And I'm OK with looking to one person and another. But if somebody has a comment and it's, you know, we're going to call for some, I would want them to speak up and say their comment. 
and I also don't want to feel like I'm running the board in a fashion that makes other people feel sidelined. So I want to make sure that everybody always feels welcome to, to ask any questions and make any comments about their about the drawings. Have you ever watched a council meeting? Yes. When they're doing legislation? Or when we're doing miscellaneous? Mr. Fury, Mr. Bellin, Mr. Barr, it, mm -hmm. it's, we do very little talk. And, and we don't usually talk, I mean, uh, sometimes we do ask somebody and welcome them and ask them what their business is. And um, we try to be a, a friendly, welcoming board so that this doesn't feel big city to everybody. Not everybody's comfortable with coming to big city to be told what they can do on their property. And we do end up telling them that, but we try to make it feel comfortable and not intimidating, especially to homeowners, people who aren't in the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I can see that a little bit. Yeah. So a lot of people are not used to coming up and talking, but. Yeah, sure, I talk to them a lot of times yeah. in the hallway, they're worried about talking. So you got through three cases in less than 24 minutes today. So that was mm -hmm. very efficient. Yes. That's the shortest meeting that you've had in, that I can find. So. Well, this conversation's adding to it. I, but that's right. that's I, um, I think that the things that are speeding it up are the not stamping and passing and signing drawings. That usually adds four or five minutes to each case. So saw that the first meeting we corrected the Right. So I think that that's been a, um, a good improvement. Everybody's on record with their vote. So I don't think that we necessarily need all the signatures on their drawings. I do think marking up drawings is still helpful. So the signatures now are required are just yours. And uh... that's correct. But marking up is my way of saying um, drawing, <clears throat> um, drawing additions and corrections onto the drawings. When you're asking people to add windows, I do think that that's still helpful. If you want to give um, Jason the, well, we got two copies, right? Yeah, um, we, we're not allowed to actually mark up the drawings that will be submitted, like, for the plans. Right. Just the verbal? Right. Yeah. Okay. The, as a building department, we're not allowed to, you see you would balloon the architect drawings and right. uh, you're not allowed to do that anymore, so. We can't even make a note on the side? On a you sign. can put it in your, like, a plan review, but it can't be on the actual drawings. <coughs> okay. So if, yeah, so if I mark I mean, if you're up, marking up your to personal to take home and just so you can draw it, that's fine. But the ones that I'm submitting back to the building department cannot be marked up. Okay. Good to know. Um, they right. just have the comment list in it with them. It is attached to the ARB comments. Yeah. yeah. And which I input into the permit application system that we use online. Okay. That works. We just have to make sure when we make our motions that we're clear verbally what all of the conditions are. Like tonight, for instance, we didn't give window sizes. We asked them to put a man door in. We, you know, we didn't give any sizes for windows. Mm -hmm. So usually we draw them on, and you know they're just drawn at the same scale as all the other windows. But I don't know if that has to be stated. A window in similar proportion and at a similar head height or sill height to the adjacent windows and even to, to be more clear. Like a man door, is a seven foot door, six foot door, three foot door, yeah. two foot door. I think we right. said 36. So one way that you might want to fix that is that you make the motion, okay, and mm -hmm. then you add individual um, conditions you vote on them as amendments to the motion. That way, you can approve it as amended. Mm -hmm. Instead of having somebody go through and say, I want to add this, 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 you make sure the first one is absolutely accurate the way you want. I think there's four of them. I'm not an architect, because I don't understand that at all. But mm -hmm. so if you wanted a window that was, what's a window? Two by three? Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> be a lot of I, make, I make a motion that we amend. <laughs> Any size you can imagine. The, 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 uh, make a motion that we amend the uh, or add the following condition that a window be added on the northeast mm -hmm. wall that's two by three. Um, let's put some detail. Mm -hmm. Call for a second. Vote it. He gets it down. It's locked. As opposed to trying to take it. where you going through four of them at the same time. Where does one start and one stop? 
see that. That would help. Most of the time, when we say add windows, we're in our heads we're meaning the same size as what you're seeing on that well, elevation already. Or right. In that case, it wouldn't be the one that's on that elevation. It would be matching the one that's on the front. Mm -hmm. Do you on know what I mean? Here. Because it's because it's around the corner from it. Right. So we weren't specific. Yeah, on that right. one. That would I drew it on mine, you know, at the same scale, so you would see it's a big one. But if we're not turning in the drawn versions, then maybe we should try and start stating more window sizes to say. And if they change, what if they change the window size by an inch? You know, window they don't usually come back through with that. So and so right. Or, you know, right. Point so, yeah. So it would just be to match the window. Because once you approve it. The planning commission approves it and they get their variances the building department checks it. right so and i think the building department i mean can we just put this you know that whenever we say to add a window we mean in proportion with your other windows and mounted at the same height yeah i mean, I mean uh, and with an understanding i mean we that i think is i think being more specific might help yeah yeah because that way it's locked in like bill said just yep. be more specific i guess yeah makes sense and that way it'll help you too yeah. Mm -hmm. So then what we need to do is either determine, like in this case, we had four commons. And are we going to handle it as one thing, or like as Bill said, should we handle it? You have four conditions, here? correct? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. He's right to miss four conditions. He's right to miss four mm -hmm. conditions. I would, I were doing this. Mm -hmm. I would make them individually so that I get what I want on a certain one locked in, and then I would move to the second. You would vote four times? I would vote four times. Here's, here's what that sounds like. I make a motion that we approve case number 322 Is there a second? Yes, discussion. Yes, uh, I think that we want to add a window to the north set. I make a motion that we add, that we amend uh, our motion to add a window at the north end that's two by three. It's a discussion. I think it's a good idea. Okay, call the vote. Boom. I, you know. Uh, yeah, next. Okay, I think I, I make a, I, I, yeah, fine. I make a motion now that I want to amend our, our uh, I want to amend our motion to add the following condition. I want a man door in the back that's two and a half by six. I, this would I in some cases that would work, but in other ways, I mean, that can really bog this down. If it's, I'd like to make a motion that there be an alternate man door to the rear if the homeowner decides that that is more functional, and then we go ahead and vote on that. In the case that an alternate rear door is approved, I make the motion that we put a window on the left side elevation. Then we have to run a vote on that. In the, I mean, it, it would turn into a lot. And I think in some cases it might be appropriate, but I think in others, giving a package deal is probably okay. When we have, you know, maybe with somebody coming in with their own house and they're building it themselves, when we have a contractor coming in in a subdivision, which I don't know if we're going to have many more of those anyway. But there, we go through those pretty quick usually, and it's always the same thing, you know, make sure you put a, um, a what you call it, window in the basement. So, so uh, it's rare that you have this manual? Window, window in the basement, make sure you bring your uh, fireplace down to grade, make sure, you know, we've got mm -hmm. a lot of those that are almost carte blanche on every plan they have because they always leave those things off. Question for Bill. Um, Bill yeah, these things, like, can we have a discussion before we make a motion so we can discuss between ourselves how we want to proceed so, and then make a one motion so mm -hmm. you call somebody up mm -hmm. and you ask him the questions that you have and then you can state your questions to the rest of the board that I think we ought to add this and when it comes time to make the motion I want to add the following conditions so we can discuss previously so everybody knows what you're talking about that's not right there Mm -hmm. Workable. Okay, you do that. Thank you. Okay. And that's why the planning commission has that separate meeting. They have everybody come up. BZA does the same thing. Nobody was. We didn't even go there with this this group. They they have a work session, so they get all that stuff out, and then Mark runs it like it's a courtroom. And actually, Ed uh, Ed Cancer runs the board's zoning appeals, and he is an attorney. So it's, it, that's legal 
because they have to they have to provide the uh, they have to provide a hardship of some sort and as we walk them through how they can do that. So mm -hmm. you don't have that issue. You're just adding conditions <coughs> to the, uh, the structure. So that's why that sheet is created separately so that we could get a better idea of how to put those together. The proper way, if we were doing it in that council meeting, it would be making multiple uh, amendments, which and once you get comfortable with this, this display, it's not a big deal. I make a motion for that. Condition. Good second. Sure. Uh, I make a motion for amending our, 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 our this case to add the following condition. Probably no discussion since you've already talked about it and agreed on it. All the roll. Think, 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 think. Next. Okay. Then, then whoever's calling the roll, and we typically like the chairman to do that, so they're in front because they're calling who's talking. There's a central control right. of who's talking. And the reason we ask the chair to make the motions is that 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 you would be more practiced at it. It would it, you wouldn't have to, because some people are uncomfortable with it. Maureen Stafford didn't make five motions in 12 years. I'm just telling you, it, it, some people were very uncomfortable making them. Yeah. But once you're used to it, as a chair with a guide, it makes it really easy to go through. But once you call, you call for the discussion. You, you, there, every time you vote, you have to have a discussion. Call for the motion, discussion, call the roll. Mm -hmm. I guess at that point, too, where you call for discussion, that can be where we, like, you had a quick question you wanted to ask me or something. Or, right. And that could yeah, be in that right. discussion time. Sure. I made a motion that we add a window to the to the side wall that's two by three um, discussion no i think it should be three by four because it should be a bigger window to fit on that side of the thing i, I, I like that idea because then in that discussion we can hash out what changes we yeah. want to make right and then and we can make a second motion to amend it with all of our so comments that, so that is that would be the motion that you have on the uh, condition yeah. on the condition and then you motion in to add conditions, yeah. and then you, and then the chair calls, calls for the vote as amended. Right. As amended. Yeah, I like that idea. It passes yeah. as amended. Discussion. Yeah, we could just add it in one big discussion section and just add our comments yeah. to it. Yeah. Okay. That, that way. Okay. Let's do Let's. Further discussion tonight. Any other topics? To process. You know, this board, when I was on it earlier, 20 years ago, it was when Tom was running it, it was really, really just all over the place. Again, it flowed, we got stuff done. I think that's what all of us kind of got used to because we're still in the phase of that. I like Tom, he's a personal friend. Just with him last Friday. Yeah. They were running this, this board when, when we were doing. 250 houses a year out of that conference room in the back with everybody waiting out here. It wasn't a public meeting. Yeah. And that's why we chose not to continue Tom because he did not want to have public meetings in the in the jury room. I All remember. of our meetings are public in the jury room. You, you, were, you were back there yeah. too then. I was there. I, I remember there was talk about we were going to start having meetings in here and then it never seemed to happen. And I went to that sure room over why. there. Yeah, we are then went to here. We have to be public meetings. Yeah. Because we have to abide by the sunshine law. We can't vote and have meetings right. or quorums that are not subject to the public. So yeah. We, we, yeah. We fixed that 10 years ago. Right. right. So. Right. Are there any other topics of discussion tonight? No, I'm fine. I'll make a motion to order some of the readers. <laughs> Do I have no margaritas? He's making a motion to order margaritas. <laughs> Those sound good. Do they go with St. Patrick's Day? It's St. Patrick's Day. You have to drink beer. <laughs> I make a motion to amend for margaritas to green beer. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Can we have a roll call? <laughs> we'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting tonight. It is. 650 652 <laughs> I'll second it
Um, we'll call for a vote. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Sharma? Yes. Mr. Markovitz? Yes. Mr. Midlick? Yes. 